So basically, as kids, you know, we're all free and we had no worries. And we could do whatever we want, like play in the rain and, you know, everything. But now we can't do all those anymore because, like, you know, we have bills to pay, we have things to do, we have work, we have school. And many things are bothering us and we have to look out for other people. But, and you can see the word peace inscribed in the background, like inner peace. I've always been drawing right from primary school, elementary school, secondary school. But then when I finished high school in 2015, it was actually Instagram. I found so many people doing a lot of impressive stuff online. And I was like, okay, I wasn't doing anything at the time because I finished high school and I was applying to university. So I started drawing to, you know, keep myself busy. So that was how I started developing my skills. And, and along the line, I found out, okay, maybe I can make a career out of this. And that's how I delved into professional arts. It's my pleasure to be here. Really looking forward to everything that I have to share and everybody's views. It's really a privilege to be able to connect with you, Kelson. So in this virtual artist talk today, Kelson will share about his artwork, his life and culture in Lagos, as well as reflect on the new work created through this residency. During this virtual residency, he's been designing a label for Grace Ridge Brewery. Originally, he planned to create a mural in person at the brewery, but he was denied a visa by the US consulate. I'd like to welcome Kathy Smith, who had so graciously offered to host Kelson over the two nearly three year period that we've been trying to schedule the residence. Kathy, who's a noted Alaska painter and longtime supporter of artists and art in the region. Thank you, Asia. I wish you were here. Me too, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Lagos is, is in the Southwest Nigeria and it's really, it's a really popular city it's actually Nigeria's most popular city. We have about, as of 2018, that was the last census they did, and there were about 23.5 million people. But actually, it should be Africa's most popular city as of this year. And it's an economic hub in Nigeria and a major finance center in Africa. So Lagos is made up of two major parts. That's uh, the island and the mainland. So the island was the original place known as Lagos. There are many things that make up Lagos, the lifestyle, the culture, the food, the atmosphere. One peculiar thing about Lagos is the street food. There's this street food called suya. It's basically barbecue beef, really spicy, and it's primarily sold at night. And the people that sell suya in Lagos are predominantly men from the northern part of Nigeria. On the left, that's roasted plantain, it's called Bali. And on the right, there are nuts, dates, and kuli kuli. This is what a market scene in Lagos looks like. Basically, we have stalls and the food stuffs are basically, you know, set out. Actually on the left, it's a woman, she's selling um, seafood, dried uh, crayfish and other types of fish. And on the right, it's meat, meat sellers. These are more local food stuff. The white seeds are called egusi. They are used to make a soup, a type of soup. They're actually melon seeds, but locally they are called egusi. I don't know if you can see at the bottom left corner, some orange stuff in a bowl, palm kernel seeds. This is what a market scene on the island looks like. This is at, I took this at Idumota Market. One thing about Lagos is there are people hawking stuff. It's really common. It's really common. And since Lagos is an island, obviously there will be a lot of beaches, right? In Lagos, it's called Takwa Bay. It's located near the harbor and it's only accessible via boats. And get good views of the city from the beach. And I told you hawking is really common in Lagos. So these are the items on the left are really popular actually. They are used to keep stuff and you know, basically for aesthetics. 
I think almost everyone has one of these in their homes. <laughs> People hawk all kinds of stuff on the streets of Lagos. Anything you can think of. Artwork, home appliances, um, anything, name it, <laughs> name it. These are Ankara prints. And this is the kind of clothing worn majorly in this part of the world. Basically, almost everybody wears, everybody owns a piece of this. And they're really colorful and vibrant, and they come in different kinds of patterns. So this is Tafawa Balewa Square. It's also on the island. It's a major square, not just in Lagos, but in Nigeria as a whole. Many major events in Nigeria are held at this square. Lagos was the former capital before it was moved to Abuja. But right now, Lagos is really, really important. So even presidential events, majorly political events are held in this square. On the right, you see um, statues of horses and eagles. That's actually a representation of the country because that's what the, the Nigerian coat of arms, the symbol. Then there's another square on the island called Tinubu Square. It was made in memory of Madame Tinubu. Here stands a cenotaph in memory of the irrepressible opponent of the slave trade and the British colonial government, Madame Efunroye Tinubu. This icon of enterprise and leadership renounced slave trading as a matter of principle and diverted her commercial skills to trading in arms and salt. Her immense wealth and nationalism earned her the prestigious title of the Iyalode of Egba land, and she remained the stormy petrol and Amazon of the anti-colonial struggle until she breathed her last in 1887. So that's the woman on the left. And most of these kind of sculptures are found around Lagos. There are many of them made in memory of a hero or a past leader. There are so many of them when you move around the city. The Cathedral Church of Christ, Lagos. It's actually the first, uh, the oldest cathedral in Nigeria, because this kind of uh, architecture is not normally found in Lagos. So it's actually unique. And it's also on the island. It's also on Lagos Island. Then this statue is a statue of uh, Ayo Masquerade. This Masquerade is a key uh, player in what we call the Ayo Festival chief who has uh, contributed positively and immensely to the development of Lagos. On the day of the festival, you'd see uh, people dressed in white, all white robes with their face veiled and also wearing hats. And they hold um, a stick of palm branches either to bless the public or to punish people who break the rules of the festival. Because the festival usually has um, some rules, like um, there are some hairstyles that are not permitted, um, some modes of transportation that will not be allowed on that, on that day on the island. And about the transport, there are basically four types, four forms that people used to go about in Lagos. Um, the first form is the uh, yellow and black buses, yellow buses with uh, black stripes, as you can see in the background of this photo. They are called Danfo buses, actually. Danfo, like, that's locally what they call them. And the second is motorcycles called um, Okada locally. But recently, they have been under heavy restrictions from the state government. Then the third mode is um, Keke Marwa, seen in this one on the left. They are actually tricycles. They are tricycles, but they are called Keke Marwa locally. And the last one are BRT buses, the normal long ones for public transport. Most people here are not originally from Lagos. Like I, I am not a Lagosian. I'm from the East. Lagos is in the West. The, the Western Nigeria is, is home to the Yoruba tribe. Eastern 
is the Igbo tribe, which is where I'm from. Then Northern, there are many tribes in Nigeria, but I'm just mentioning the major ones. There are over 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria. So many people from these ethnic groups come from all over the country to settle in Lagos or work or set up businesses. That's fantastic. Elizabeth Adams is with us and she made a, a comment, do what you love. So you know Kelson through your involvement with the Street Project Foundation and tell us a little bit, um, if you would, about yourself and how you, how you know Kelson in the Street Project Foundation. In what way does he come across through that organization? Okay, um, good day everyone. I am Elizabeth Adams, also an ambassador of the Street Project Foundation and presently a member of the Youth Advisory Board of the Street Project Foundation. So we represent the Nigerian youth on the, on the on street, in street project. So um, I joined Street Project much later after Kelsen. Kelsen had joined earlier before me. I joined in 2020 during the pandemic. That was how I joined them. So ours was a virtual boot camp for six weeks. And it all boiled down to doing what you love, making a sustainable living, doing what you love. That's one of our creed in the Street Project Foundation. We are thought to, to, you know, to embrace that, to follow our passion, our dreams. And um, I have, I know, I know Kelsey as one of the amazing artists on the platform. We have quite a number of them who paint, draw, and do all those. Kesslin is one of them. His talent is amazing. He stands out whenever he has, he shares his works on the Street Project Ambassadors platform. It's always a sight to behold and I look forward to seeing them. Um, I am a poet and I had joined the Street Project with writing poem, but I've always loved to look at artworks and you know, it just speaks to my spirit. I can't do it, but I admire it a lot. And it tells a story for me. Some of them provoke me into writing certain piece that I do write. So yes, that's how I know Kelson. Wow, thank you so much, Elizabeth. I'm so pleased that you could join us today. And I'd like to welcome- I'm delighted. Thank you. And welcome to Rita Izenwa Okoro. I'm so pleased that you could also join us today. Um, Kelson's just provided a beautiful orientation to Lagos through photographs that he's taken in places that he's visited. Um, Rita, uh, would you be willing to um, introduce yourself and, and tell us about the amazing um, vision that you had in um, helping to develop Street Project Foundation and reaching out to Bunnell Street Art Center so that we could become um, networked and envision um, artists and residents. And at Tree Project Foundation, that's what we're about. We believe very much in the power of the creative arts um, for human development. Um, and Kelson, over the years, has taken a lot of um, our philosophy and ideology of using his art forms to art advocate for the things that he cares about um, and that young people like him care about. Um, so we're truly, truly excited about his exhibition um, and seeing Lagos from his lens, from his eyes. Um, and I'm glad Elizabeth is here, who's also a Script Project ambassador. So it gives you um, an idea of the depth and the, the richness of the the pool of creative talents that we harness and cultivate within Street Project Foundation. We could transition into um, some more images from you, Kelson, um, just orienting us to what you have been making and how you have adapted your residency. Um, and um, along the way, Kathy, if you have questions, um, Elizabeth or Rita, if you have questions, you're all most welcome to to speak up. I work with um, charcoal, graphite, and acrylic. And also I do digital art. So basically most of the pieces you're going to be seeing are made with those media. So this is the first piece. Um, this one is actually a portrait. 
it was made with charcoal and it's basically this is the first kind of art that i started doing when i started doing art i started with portraiture realistic portraiture that was the first type of art that drew me in and pulled me in along the line i've actually um transitioned into something more surrealistic but at the time this was made in 2020 i was doing more of hyper realistic works because i believe that every mark on our skin every detail around us is what makes us unique and special this one was made this year actually last month it's a combination of digital and traditional so the figure was made using charcoal and graphite the um clothing was done with acrylic it's, it's titled away and the background was done with digital art. So I painted it digitally. I painted the background digitally and I drew the uh, figure traditionally. It's actually a self-portrait. I don't know if you can see, but it's actually me in the work. And it's about reflection, meditation. That's what the piece is basically about. Title is No Limits. It's a piece on equity in the world. I'm talking about a, a child from a disadvantaged home and also disadvantaged physically. That's what the wheelchair is for. I try to relate uh, importance. There are ways we can take advantage of technology to close certain gaps in society. So basically the child is using a VR um, headset to learn about the planets. There are some children that don't learn the normal way that we learn in classrooms. So this one is actually learning better with visual aids. The, the fact that it's so colorful, it speaks, it speaks a lot to the modern day um, child. And my question is, um, because I'm, I'm an educator, so this spoke to me because you had talked about the different learning styles of individuals in a space. So some would rather learn uh, visually. We have the visual learners, the auditory learners, and the, yeah. um, you know, how did you come across such a beautiful idea of knowing that, okay, this happens and regardless, there should be no limits to what a child can achieve and learn? So I made this piece um, for a residency call in the earlier part of this year. I think that was in April this year. The call was for equity. The theme was equity. I, before I make any of my piece, I, I like to do research because I feel like the internet is like a world of boundless knowledge. Though I had the idea I wanted to do in my mind, I had the idea already in my mind, but I wanted more um, concrete uh, background to the piece. And I discovered that there are many ways that disadvantaged people are not really given the platform to get to their maximum potential. And I decided to put that in a piece. So that's basically it. So I took a photograph of the muse. The muse is actually my, I took a photograph of my sister. So most of my pieces, I take um, photographs of either myself or my siblings or anybody I know. Powerful, thank you, thank you. Then the title of this one is Conflicted. It's a piece on mental health. So there are two sides to this piece. The, the good side, that's the days of hysteric highs and the bad side, the depressing lows. That's why I use the uh, yin and yang symbol in the background to represent the two sides. And that's, what, that's the struggle that bipolar people have to go through. Some days they are happy, some days they are really down. I have, I have people around me that, that experience such things. And in this part of the world, actually, these kind of issues are not really talked about enough. So I feel that there needs to be more work done in the area of mental health issues, because I feel it needs more attention in this part of the world. This is another portrait. This one was done in 2018. It was made with graphite and charcoal. Title is Flutter of Hope. The butterfly was painted with acrylic. This is 
the this flutter of hope one, then the second one is flutter of hope two. They were made together in a series. The the butterfly in this one actually in the physical piece, I, there's a word hope written on the wings, on the four wings, H O P E, four letters on four wings, and they actually glow in the dark, like a form of symbolism of hope in darkness. The butterfly is also symbolic because of the way butterflies grow. You know, when they are first born, they are ugly caterpillars, but then they, after some weeks, they bloom into beautiful butterflies. So it's like a transition from a gloomy situation to a very beautiful situation. This piece is a self-portrait and it was done to show the after effects of colonialism in Africa. There are supposed to be 10 pieces in this series. This is the first one. And this one is centered on the Igbo tribe. So what I wanted to do is that I wanted to cover 10 different tribes in Africa. So I started with the Igbo tribe, which is where I'm from. And I use myself as the subject. So the, the writings in the um, halo, in the background, are the ancient and CBD writings. The origin is disputed. The tribe that originated, that um, founded them, the origin is disputed. But there's no dispute to the fact that they were used by the Igbo tribe in ancient times. That was around the 15th, the 13th century. So the pieces are, the piece is titled North Carolina Igbo Boy. If you can see the guy is wearing a hoodie to show a um, difference in culture. Many Igbos, when, when they were um, exported during the colonial times, most of the Igbo people landed in places like North Carolina, Virginia, and yeah, those two major locations. So what I'm trying to say in the piece is that most black people in North Carolina and Virginia today are most likely of Igbo origin because that's where many of them ended up. So that's basically what the piece is about, about the hybridization of culture. And if you notice there, are, I don't know if you know, but like there are many African religions practiced in different parts of the United States. Like the Yoruba religion is practiced in some parts of Miami actually but there are little deviations from the original ones, but it's still the same roots all over the world. There are still traces of different African religions and culture in today's world. So that's what the series is about. And this next one is titled Of My Mind. I did this one in 2018. The previous one was made um, last year, 2021. This one is titled Of My Mind. And it's about, um, it's also about mental health. It's about letting go of things that are bothering you, things that you cannot change, situations that you have no control about. You just need to like move on and take a deep breath, move on because you can't change the past, but the future is in your hands. This one has been acquired, but many of the other ones are still available. And this is a close-up piece of the installation view I showed you earlier, once upon a time, the one about childhood freedom. There's also like a metaphor in the sense that water is being used. The water droplets are like also to show, you know how free water is. That's also like the metaphor and the relationship between child and its freedom. And this one was made, Asia, you know about this one? Yes. Yes. Yeah, when we were experimenting about ideas for the fiscal residency. So it was made um, basically for peonies to celebrate um, the peony and the festival you told me about in Homa. That's right. When we That's hope right. to come during the peony festival. This is titled Untold. The story behind this is that there are many um, civilizations and settlements and cultures, way of life that are not really told well or appropriately in mainstream media about Africa. You know, most times when 
mainstream media wants to report something about Africa, they try to kind of give like a false image that Africa is like maybe a very primitive area with no modern um, infrastructure or forward thinking way of life, which is not really true at all. Every place has their downsides and their upsides. But I think most times mainstream media likes to focus on the downsides than the upsides of the African continent. I do think that it's true that, that many of us um, hold in our minds an image of Africa that we only know from, um, from media or from history that maybe we haven't studied in a long time that maybe wasn't, didn't reflect the reality in the first place. And I just thought that what Kelson said earlier about the creation of his piece, uh, it was an eye opener and gives me a lot more to think about and it gives me a change in my perspective. Absolutely. I'm, I'm just so glad that you paused to reflect on that and to think about the power of, of visual artworks in lifting up alternative stories and, and other truths and maybe um, in the voices of the communities and the artists that they represent. So, so thank you for, for um, sharing your thoughts on that beautiful presentation. So when we discovered that the U.S. consulate would not provide a visa, we had a discussion about what our options could be, and we proposed back to you the idea of a virtual residency. And so yeah. um, you could be compensated for all of the time and work and thought that you have put into this, you know, residency. And, and so you, um, you know, proposed to do some work with Grace Ridge Brewery. I connected you with them and showed you pictures of the building. And we hoped originally that you could do a mural, but then you positioned um, yourself to be flexible and consider designing um, a label for them. And that's very exciting for um, the owners of Grace Ridge Brewery because they like to use African in products in their in their malt beverages. And so maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you um, like to work with your clients. And well, we all got on the same page about the uh, virtual residency and the label idea. I had to, I asked uh, Sherry, she's the co-owner of Grace Ridge. I asked her about the background of the product that they wanted the label on. She let me know that um, they use honey from Zambia. They use honey from Zambia, but the honey is actually sold by a Canadian company, but the origin is from Zambia. Then she also let me know a few other things about some other ingredients that I use like roasted malts and she also made me know that it is Baltic fermented. So I started doing some research because I didn't really know much about honey potters. And I found out about the key ingredients used in making them. And I decided to fuse that with what Homer represents. Homer, I know Homer and Grace Ridge, Grace Ridge Building also represents. They really appreciate the landscape and the natural environment they find themselves in. That is the people of Homer. And I decided to incorporate the, the mountain that Grace Ridge named their company after. Um, everything was, everything on the label, I drew them digitally. I used um, Ibis, Ibis paint. The mountains are drawn in a honeycomb symbol, represent the uh, honey potter background, then the bees, also to give the honey background. The hops at the top left give the idea that it's a beer and the ingredients used in making a beer. Then at the bottom right, uh, plants home to Homer, lupin and fireweed. 
barley, which is also a main ingredient in making the beer. And Grace Ridge's uh, logo at the top and the name of the beer. I think the background color fuses very well with the idea of Honey Porter. I don't know if you agree with me. I actually gave her two designs. The second design had the dark blue background color. But I feel this one goes better with what is going to go in the content of the bottle. It is so vibrant. And I love that you chose the warm brown for the background because it presents a beautiful contrast to the vivid tones of fuchsia and purple and green and blue. I think it looks even better when you put it on the bottle. I like that you designed it for the shape of the bottle. That's an important consideration. It will always be seen rounded. And so that on um, the centrality of the honeycomb shape. Exactly. Exactly. I'm sorry that Grace Ridge is not able to join us, to, but I know they're very excited about your work. And I think that is um, really speaks to... Um, you know, in terms of the legacy of your residency and your determination to work with them, that you've been very, very pleasant, very professional, and are given them an opportunity to elevate their commitment to, um, to art and to um, equity economically on by engaging, you know, contemporary artists from Nigeria. That's really, really exciting for us. And we're grateful to be a part of that connection. I'm also happy. It was a pleasure working with, with them. Sherry was really, really uh, professional also. And she had great ideas too. I would love to thank everybody who could join us today and share their comments. The greatest gratitude to um, Rita Izenwa Kwado from Street Project Foundation for connecting us and to Kelson yes. for, persisting, for persisting in your work and um, your commitment to finding a way, you know, that we can still contribute to building a better world. Even when we don't have all the freedoms to move physically in our bodies, we can really be connected through our, <laughs> our art and our hearts. Thank you. Thank you everyone too. Thank you, Mrs. Rita. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Kathy. Thank really you, Kelson. It. It's been it's been such a great pleasure to see your work, and I look forward to seeing the label on the beer. Thank you all, and please stay in touch. I hope we can continue to work together in some fashion. Exactly. Exactly. We love to stay in touch with everyone.